I was paralyzed 10 years ago, and this year I wanted to do something different, something special. First, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born into homelessness. I lost my dad to cancer at age nine. I went through four separate foster homes and became a quadriplegic at the age of 16 because of a horse accident. I realized early on the circumstances we go through don't dictate our successes or failures. What we do about them, that does. I take my goals seriously, and I was able to accomplish things in my career and my lifestyle that everybody said was impossible and that I should never do. Creating these circumstances taught me so many different principles to follow that actually work when it comes to creating that success that you want. And that's why today I have developed a set of disciplines, habits, and routines and rituals that I know get you from point A to point B. That's why for this fundraiser, I created a 50-minute video along with a workbook that goes to anybody that gracefully donates towards spinal cord research. I hope you enjoy the video and more importantly, take the habits and disciplines that I share and make your life that much better as well. Welcome to my 10 year anniversary fundraiser. This class today is going to be extremely intuitively led. I am on a little nature walk here as I talk and the content that we're going to go over is a combination of experience of thousands of dollars of invested education that I've done in self-development and a portion of over 80 audiobooks and self-development as well along with stories and examples of people that I have met in life and the best content that I've noticed helps those people in real situations. So I don't know what exactly you've been going through but I know that these principles will help you if you take action on them. If you incorporate them in the daily habits that you do, the daily disciplines. These are all principles that work, but you need to work the principles. So it's important that you don't just listen to what I have to say today, but you take some action on the different new habits that you could incorporate. Some of these you're going to hear and maybe they don't resonate with you. If that's the case, that is fine. But the ones that do somewhat resonate with you, I hope that you at least take a few baby steps on incorporating those through your day so that you can have better days. Because there are a lot of us where we want a different life, but we don't want to change anything. And that's like the definition of insanity. Expecting different results, but not changing anything or doing anything differently. So if you want an extraordinary life, you have to have extraordinary habits, extraordinary disciplines, and then, and only then, you will see the change that you are looking for. Some of these things that we're going to cover today, you aren't going to want to hear. You aren't. Some of these, it takes a level of responsibility. And most people would rather live in the victim mindset so that they have something to blame when things aren't working. Instead of blaming themselves and not necessarily blaming themselves but instead of taking full responsibility 
that it's their fault and it's their reason that they aren't where they are supposed to be. Talking about the blaming for a moment, it's not a blame game, it's an awareness game. So I don't want you to feel like, oh my goodness, all these things happened, it's all my fault, this, that, and another thing. When you finally have the awareness that you are the way you are because of what you do or don't do, say or don't say, participate in or don't participate in, that's a very good place to be because it's like, okay, I am where I am because of everything that I've done. And the past is the past because of those different habits and disciplines that I participated in. Well, guess what? Now that I know that I was responsible for the past, I know I'm responsible for the future. And when you have that aha moment, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm capable of anything. Because I am responsible for where I'm at. And because of that, now if I just take responsibility and if I take action on what I'm doing, I can have everything and anything. And that's where I want to get you guys today. So, with that being said, we have some house cleaning we need to do. A lot of individuals, they are stuck where they are because of these different events that's happened. So, oh my goodness, I feel guilty about this certain thing in the past. It's something I did, and now they can't move forward from that. That is a very limiting space to be at because now, instead of working on your future, working on the present, you're always fearful and guilty and resentmentful of the past. And there are two Eh, there's more than two. But most guilt are broken down into two categories. One, a sense of guilt. And two, neurotic guilt. So let's unpack those for a second. Sense of guilt. Sense of guilt is useful. Neurotic guilt. Neurotic guilt is not useful at all. Neurotic guilt is there was this thing that happened in the past. Let's use an example. For example, I stole this candy bar from the shop 10 years ago. And I keep on thinking about it every day. I'm so sad. I'm so depressed. I'm this, that, and another thing because of the actions that I had taken or not taken. Sometimes just as important. Like not going to your daughter's wedding because you weren't happy with who she married. So sometimes it's what you didn't do. But neurotic guilt isn't useful because guess what? You're beating yourself up over something that had happened. Can you change the past? No, you cannot change the past. The only thing you can do is move forward. So, that brings us to the second thing. Sense of guilt. Sense of guilt. Now that one is useful. Where is sense of guilt useful? Same example. You're at that store about to take a candy bar and then you get the sense of guilt. Oh my gosh. If I do this, that really shows my character. That really shows who I am. What values I have. This, that, or another thing. And then you decide, hopefully, hopefully decide not to do it. That's where guilt is useful. Because that guilt helps stop you from doing something that you believe is good or bad. So all of these different guilts that you have that are neurotic that you've had for a long time, I am going to give you permission to let it go. You were doing the best you could 
with the resources, the skills, the abilities that you had at the time. And if you had better skills, resources, abilities, you wouldn't have done that certain thing. So just know that you were doing the best you could with the circumstances and the situation that you were dealing with. And 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 now and now you can let it go. You can let it go. That was one of the first house cleaning things because a lot of people that I've noticed have a strong strong sense of guilt or neurotic guilt and they're stuck and one question that you can ask yourself let's say this wasn't the case for you but you're like you know what there's something that's not letting me move forward okay guys I want you to ask yourself late at night or early in the morning I want you to think what is one thing that I am not doing that I know I should be doing. And when you are honest with yourself, it's going to show. And it's gonna be like, you know what? I know I've been needing to take action on this. I know I've been needing to ask somebody this. I know X, Y, or Z. There's a saying, the truth will set you free. And I've heard that so many times. And for the longest time, I didn't really understand what that really meant. It's like, okay, the truth will set you free. What does that even mean? And what it means or what it means to me is when I realize, when I ask myself that question, I get a clear indication what I need to be working on. And, and it's then and only then where it's like, okay, I don't want to admit this about myself. I don't. This saddens me. I know I'm better than this. I know this, that, or another thing. And when you finally, when you finally admit to yourself like, hey, this is something that I know I need to do and I am now going to do it. I am no longer going to wait whatever extended amount of time that it takes to implement this strategy or implement this thing that I know I need to do. And one question I want you to ask yourself, if you do not change, I want you to foreshadow for a second. If you do not change that thing that you know you're supposed to do, how is that going to affect you one month from now? One year from now? How is that gonna affect you five years from now? What if you're working on some kind of weight issue and you're in that same, maybe it's overweight, maybe it's underweight. You're in that same position five years from now. You're still 150 pounds overweight or you're still in that toxic relationship or you still haven't taken the necessary steps to, to pursue your goals and your dreams in life. Foreshadow that. And if that doesn't get you to move, I am not sure what will. So now that we might know, now I know there's going to be a portion of you that are still a little confused. Like, you know what, Alex? I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't know what kind of dreams and, and passions and goals I have in life. Okay, I understand that. And for the people that are in that position, I've met people that are in their 50s and their 60s, they still don't know what they wanna do with life. Fortunately, we're living in a time where we live a very long age. And no matter what age you're at, you still can make those necessary adjustments and changes to be in the position you finally have always been waiting for. 
But just know that that position, it's not a destination, it's a journey. You will always continue to reach some kind of goal, some kind of commitment. And if you only think this is a singular event, okay, I just need to do this and then there I get this weight, I get this financial goal, I get this relationship and then I'm gonna be happy. That's not going to work. Eventually you're going to want to achieve another thing and another thing. So just know that this is a continual journey. And once you accomplish one goal, you're gonna build up that confidence and that know-how of doing some more. Also, there's a part where I said goal and then I changed it to commitment. When I ask you this question, I want you to answer it honestly. If I said my goal is to eat a slice of pizza today, did I eat that pizza? Potentially, right? Maybe. There's a possibility, a chance that I might have, but there's still a chance that I might have not. So when you language from a goal, or use language, excuse me, from a goal to a commitment, you are changing the uncertainty about it. It's like, no, this, this, I, I don't have a goal of eating pizza today. I have a commitment. This is what I am committing to. And then if you said my commitment is to eat pizza today, did you eat the pizza? Yes, you ate the pizza. It's your commitment. Now, of course, there's some people that don't follow commitments. And if you're one of those, then you know where you need to work on. Furthermore, there is a three-piece strategy that I like using when you are trying to find your purpose or trying to find the different goals and, and things that light you up in life. And those three pillars are, one, finding something that you like, two, finding something that you're good at, and then three, learning how to monetize what you like and you're good at. Because guess what? We're having a pretty big shift in the world where things that used to be jobs are turning obsolete. There's this thing called the horse complex where back in the day, horses were used to provide transportation. They were used as a means of plowing the fields. And now that we have technology that we no longer need horses, do they cease to exist? No, they're still around. They still are here, but guess what? They're having a more happy life now. They can graze in the pastures. They can do this, that, or another thing. And eventually that's gonna happen to us as well. So if your job is a little less untraditional, for instance, you, you really like painting and you love nature walks and you created this list of things. And by the way, when it comes to one of those pillars, you're going to list a list of 20, list of 20 things that you like to do. And eventually as you're doing that, you're going to see a correlation or maybe a collaboration between a couple things that you never even thought. Like I was talking about the painting and nature walks. Maybe you create some kind of passion where you are doing those paintings in nature. Maybe you have classes, maybe it's online. All I want you to know is it doesn't have to be a, a traditional job. And in fact, some traditional jobs are going, but I wanna give you once again permission. There's a lot of people that they feel like they need permission. I'm telling you, you don't. But if you're somebody that you want that validation that, that, oh my goodness, 
is this okay that I'm doing this? You know, everybody thinks it's a bad idea, this, that, and other thing. Yes, it's okay. Guess what? There's a lot of goals that I've had in life, my main goals that I'm super passionate about. Nobody was excited about it. Most people told me, Alex, this is a terrible idea. You should do this instead. You should do that instead. Now, were they doing that to, to manipulate me, to harm me, to have me not achieve my dreams? No, they weren't. They do have your best interest, but unfortunately, they're at a limited mindset. They're like, oh my goodness, I know I couldn't achieve this. That's maybe something they're thinking. And I don't want my friend, I don't want my family member to fail. So I'm going to try to to express that in a way as nicely as I can. So sometimes they don't mean to discourage you. You're just telling your 100 dollar dream to a one dollar thinker and you need to expand that that friend zone expand that that zone of of peers that you really value what they think so instead of having friends that always say, no, that's a bad idea, this is stupid, this, that, or another thing, you need to have friends that encourage you, that say, hey, you know what? Sure, this is going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it in the end. Let's talk about that for a second. Hard. Everybody, they're like, okay, I want, I want the easy way out. What's, what's the quick fix to this? What is the, the secret formula the secret formula is to work freaking hard and 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 not necessarily hard you don't need to work hard but if you're if you're in the mindset of like oh i'm just here to do what's easy that's not going to work you don't want to do what's easy you want to do what's right and there is a huge difference and you'll know the difference. If you're honest with yourself, you'll be like, okay, I know that it requires this amount of dedication to the gym, this amount of dedication to eating more healthy. And is that gonna be easy? No, it's not gonna be easy, guys. It's not. But guess what? We're also creatures of habit. And this is where we can use this nature hack to help us in life. So you want to start small. You want to be at a point where you know what you want. I want to work on my body. I want to be in a healthier situation. Okay, let's start small. One meal a day. We are going to be disciplined and eating what we should do. And in doing that, you are going to create that habit. And then you can now go bigger. See, the problem is you have to learn how to show up first. If you don't know how to show up in your life, like you don't know that if I at least do this, I can start improving. Most people, they want to go big too quick. They're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work out for two hours each day. I'm gonna eat three disciplined meals. They might do it for a couple of days and guess what, it's, gonna, it's going to go back to the same routine that they once were because you have to first learn how to show up before you can learn how to improve. And that, that's a very important principle because now, now once you learn how to show up, there's this one person. There's a couple different strategies. I'm gonna give you two. The first was the, that one person that I was just about to talk about. He set a goal of going to the gym just for five minutes a day. Five minutes. And then he 
did that for six weeks. And I've heard different things where it's like 21 days for a habit, 30 days for a habit, 60 days for a habit. I really don't know what's true. I think it's different for individuals. I know it's different for me. And it's like, when do you determine what's a habit? For me, my definition of habit is when I get that unconscious reminder. Alex, I've been eating this way for three days. Alex, I've been implementing this strategy in my business for three days. And on that fourth day, I get the reminder. Oh yeah, I got to implement this strategy. And this is only if you aren't writing down what you're supposed to be doing, which is a very important principle as well. But that's a whole nother topic. The other strategy was, okay, I'm going to do five push-ups, five push-ups a day. If I want to stop, I'm going to stop. And you really have to follow that because if you don't stop and you almost show your body that you're trying to cheat the system, it's going to realize. So when you, when you do five push-ups and you aren't happy with that, your body's going to be like, oh, you're trying to cheat the system. No, 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 no. Do five push-ups. Be happy with it. Oh my goodness, I did five push-ups. Hey, you know what? Today I want to do more. And I happen to do more. Great. And the days that you don't, that's all right. But at least this way you are starting to learn how to show up. Eventually now you're going to be like, oh my goodness, every single day I do at least my five push-ups. Everybody, let's be honest, everybody can take five push-ups out of their day. It's not going to take long. And you know what? If you're physically disabled like myself, I don't know if I could do five push-ups. You can adapt it to what you can do. All right, I'm going to do five curls. I'm going to do five something that moves me towards showing up. And then now that you're showing up each day, now you can improve. You'll be like, okay, Alex, now... That I know that I'm going to show up every day. I'm going to work on instead of five minutes of push or five push ups, I'm going to do five minutes of push ups, even if that turns out to be one push up or like 60. And I don't know if you can do 60 push ups in five minutes. Prove me wrong. I would love to hear about that in the comments. So now that you've started small, you know how to incorporate it in your day. Some of you, there, you're still going to be like, oh my goodness, Alex. I know I need to do my five push-ups. I know it's so easy. And what I like about this is it's gonna mess with people that have an ego. Their ego is gonna be like, wow, you can even do one push-up? Not even one? Wow. That really says a whole lot about you, doesn't it? And I don't really like the ego. In fact, the last five, three years for sure, the five years I've been working on getting rid of the ego, I've really, stepped into a whole different kind of energy and it's a beautiful spot to be in very beautiful and i think most problems in the world would be solved if everybody did but i don't want to get on my high horse there especially since horses is how i broke my neck <laughs> uh, just kidding um kind of but if you're an individual that you're still struggling with that there's this rule called the five second rule and that is a great technique where your brain can no longer talk you out of it. Because that's what happens to a lot of us. We're like, okay, I want to do these five push-ups. Five push-ups. Is that really anything to help with your muscles in the first place? Is that really doing you any good? Or try again like in an hour and then you're sleepy in an hour or this, that, or another thing. So the five second rule is when you think of something that you need to do, you go five, four, three, two, one, and you do it. And now this is important, guys. This is very important because you need to start taking action on the different goals and stuff when it's fresh, when you have that inspiration, like, oh my goodness, I wanna do five push-ups. 
If you're watching this right now, I want you to do five push-ups right now. Because guess what? When you start moving your body, you are going to change um, your physiology. And you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, this movement, it's, it's changing, it's changing, mm, how do I wanna say this? It's, it's slowly going to change the habits that you have. Kind of lost my train of thought for that last piece. But if you don't, if every time you get a burst of inspiration, like, hey, this is what I want to do, but I never do it. Are you not seeing that habit? Are you not seeing that, that um, repeating um, repetition in your life? Where it's like, okay, so this is where I'm gonna change. No, oh my goodness, I have an idea to make a video right now. I'm gonna make a video. Because I know if I don't do it, it's not gonna happen. So, you say five, four, three, two, one, and then you do it. I need to work out, five, four, three, two, one. I'm working out. I need, oh my goodness, that cheese look, cake looks get great. But I should go away. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going away. I should ask my boss for a raise. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna ask my boss for a raise. Whatever your your goal, your situation is, start. Just start. And this is going to help you in doing that. All right. Next principle I really want to work on: taking action. We've already discussed this a little bit in the beginning, but I want to showcase the importance of it furthermore. Even if it requires me to say something that I've already said. So, everything that you want requires some form of action. And Every principle I've talked about requires you to do, or in some cases, don't do. Like, don't eat the cheesecake. You, or, um, don't go, I, I don't know, on this, that, or another thing. And if you don't, take that action. If you if you listen to all these principles and you're like, you know what, Alex? These sound great. I already knew this. Knowing isn't enough. If knowing was enough, sorry for the loud car. If knowing was enough, we would all be millionaires and we would all have six pack abs. But just because I know that doing sit-ups is gonna give me abs, let one more car by. Just because I know that sit-ups is going to give me abs doesn't mean I'm going to have the abs. I have to apply that knowledge. I have to apply that information in order to get what I want. This almost goes into being as well. And before I get into being, you choose what just one or two or three. I don't. Don't overstress yourself, but choose at least one of these things and implement it for a month. Implement it each day, and then you know what? When you've seen that dramatic change, okay, revisit this and implement another technique, another principle. I want to talk about being for a second. So, there was this principle that I had learned a while ago and it said set a goal to be a millionaire not to get a million dollars but to become the person that it requires to achieve that million dollars to become the person that has the habits that has the disciplines that has the action-oriented mindset that it takes to start achieving those things. 
And sure, the million dollars is nice, but now guess what? You're finally a person where you can experience your maximum potential. Most people don't even come close to reaching their potential. And the potential is already there. We have infinite potential to be anyone and everyone. And technically it works in the opposite way as well. Technically we have infinite potential for being pretty negative and cynical as well. And that's more shadow work and I don't have time to get into that. But you have the possibility to do really good or to do really bad. And I want you to ask yourself, do you want to be the example of what to do or what not to do? Mm. And depending on how you answer that question, will really say where you need to start working on yourself. So, one of my signature talks in public speaking for high school and middle schools is changing your identity. Being who you want to be. My name is Alex P. Plasky. I am not Alex Plasky. Alex Plasky does not have the disciplines nor the habits that Alex P. Plasky does. And I have created this identity in the hopes of having an extraordinary life, having accomplished extraordinary goals like moving to California as a quadriplegic. And Alex P. Plasky was a rebirth of my maximum potential. And sadly, and this is a story that I told my brother a long time ago, and it sometimes even goes deeper than just the habits and the disciplines, but Alex Plasky died. Alex Plasky no longer exists. And now you get to choose. You get to decide what's your Alex P. Plasky. Just incorporate your middle name. What's your Sabrina M. Lynn instead of Sabrina Lynn? And when you answer that question... Okay, Alex P. Plasky. What does Alex P. Plasky want? I went through those three pillars. I know what I like to do, and I know what I'm good at. Okay, I'd like to do public speaking. I'd like to live in California. All right, what kind of being, what kind of action, what kind of doing do I need to do to accomplish that goal? And when you start writing down those different action items, you're going to see, okay, here's, here's one part of my life. I'm not showing up. Here's one part of my life. I need to show up to become that person that I want to be. And Will there be setbacks? Yes. Will there be things that you weren't expecting? Yes. Will there be some times where you want to cry, where you want to laugh, where you want to where you want to just give up? Yes. There will be times. But guess what? As long as you keep moving forward, you are going to get that eventually. Now, you have a certain idea of what it is that you need to do to achieve that. The analogy I like to use is you think that a square is going to help you in your relationship and your weight issue and your financial situation and your business. 
And most people, they obsess over that square. Okay, well, I want the perfect square. It needs to have, you know, the perfect 90 degree angle. It needs to be made out of gold. It needs this, that, and another thing. And then you never take action on that square. You always think, oh, there can be a more improved square. Maybe my square isn't filled in. It's hollow. And when you start obsessing over these different things, you never take action. And you're going to be in the same spot that you've always been in. And I'm so sorry to say that because I know this was going to require you to take a, a level of responsibility you've probably never taken in your life. But that's good. Because when you've never done something in your life, you're going to have something that you've never had in your life. And that's where it's super exciting. So you finally take action on the square. And guess what? You realized you never needed a square. You needed a circle. And you would have never learned about that circle if you wouldn't have taken action in the first place. And then you start working on this circle and you're improving this circle and then you learn that a triangle is even more efficient. So then you start working on that triangle and you start using that triangle and whatever that triangle is, whatever that discipline, whatever that habit is. And eventually you're going to find better ways of getting what you want. But you would have never learned that if you wouldn't have tried that square. So it's very important. Whatever idea you have, no matter if it makes you fail, you're going to give that a try. Failure, love that word. Why do I love failure? Because failure is the only thing that's gonna get you what you want. And guess what? If you did fail, congratulations. You've done more than most people have. Most people, the idea of failure stops them. They have that fear of failure. One of my favorite sayings is by Samuel L. Beckett. Ever tried, ever failed. No matter, try again, fail again, fail better. And it's only when you keep on failing, you are going to fail better. You are going to see that, oh my goodness, I am slowly moving. Okay, I'm not moving as fast as I wanted, but at least I'm moving. Don't fa fail backwards, fail forward. And in doing so, you are going to get those things that you wanted. So now that we've started taking action, I want, I don't want you to, to stop your growth because of the little wins. I'm going to give an example. When you notice that you start losing weight, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm losing. And then you might backtrack. You might eat a donut. Let's say you're working on creating a platform with more subscribers. You make a few videos and you're like, wow, these ones were really successful. And then you're like, wait a second. I was going to make a video every day and now I'm accessing about the video that I made a month ago and I still haven't made any new videos. So it's important to be excited about the growth you're having, but you still keep on doing it regardless of success or failure. The only time you truly fail is when you don't try anything at all. So I really feel that this is probably enough to get you moving. And that's all you want. You just want to start moving. Because an object in movement tends to stay in movement. And now, just to give you guys one last, last, last piece. Actually, I'm going to give you two. I'll do a little encore. Responsibility is important in your life. 
Responsibility is really hard to admit. Really, eyes. It really is. Because, like, when you know that that you're responsible for where you are, I understand that. It's discouraging. It's like, you know what? Uh, you know, I, I'm not where... I'm not happy with my life. I'm not this. I'm not that. And you nearly, like, beat yourself up. But just know that it's going to be the thing that gives you that aha, like, oh my goodness. I'm responsible, so now I can create the life I want. I want to give you a formula. E plus R equals O. This one is one of my signature ones in high schools and middle schools that I do. E is event. R is response. And O is outcome. So E plus R equals O is event plus response equals outcome. We all have these different events in our lives. Mine was being born into hopelessness, losing my dad to cancer at age nine, going through four to five separate foster homes, having a spinal cord accident at 16. And sometimes it's not as severe. Sometimes your event or your circumstances, I got cut off on the street. Somebody took my parking spot. This, that, or another song thing. You know, pretty superficial. And guess what? How, uh, guess what? When it comes to how people react. Most people have a negative outcome with that, right? They're like, oh my goodness. I just got off, cut off off the street. And you hear people say things like, how are you doing? They're like, I'm not doing good at all. Somebody took my parking spot. Somebody cut me off on the street. Somebody did this, that, or another thing. They are allowing their circumstance to affect them emotionally. And I'm showing you guys a way where you no longer allow your outside world affect your inside reality. And this is going to bring you so much happiness and joy because now something bad can happen. The other day, I fell out of my wheelchair. I've been driving a wheelchair for 10 years, almost 10. This will be 10 when this uploads. And I never had fallen out before. Well, I had a speed bump and instead of continually going through it like I, I always do, I decided to stop the wheelchair. Guess what? I bashed my head on the floor. First thing I said to my nurse, well, at least I didn't break my neck. <laughs> and I have a very humorful way of things because I know that it's not responsible for how I feel. I smashed my head on the floor or on the concrete. And there wasn't one second where I was like mad, resentful, um, um, pissed off, angry. I had none of those emotions. And you can have that too. And it's all on how you respond. So, event. This is the event. I fell out of my wheelchair. My response, instead of being mad and pissed off at this situation, which, guess what? Won't change anything. That mad and resentment will create an outcome. You being mad and pissed off at the world. Right? Because you responded in a negative way. But now, instead, you're going to respond, oh, you know what? things happen. Life happens. And I know that the world doesn't happen to me, but the world happens for me. And no matter what happens, I know that somehow that is in benefit to me. Maybe it doesn't show up directly, but it shows up indirectly. Maybe it's just a good lesson that you learn. Could be many things. But just know that you have the choice. And that's what it is. It's a choice. You have the choice on how you respond. And when you respond correctly, great things are coming. My last note before I wrap this up is I realized that there's a lot of different goals a lot of different commitments that you want to create in life. And sometimes when you're so far from it, 
you have the anxiety and you have this depression where you don't have what you want. And you wonder why and you start asking these terrible questions that don't help you anyways. I want you to know that what you do have is already so much. It is so much. You have the ability, most of you, have the ability to walk, the ability to feel your whole body. I can only feel 15% of my body. And even in those two things, I am grateful. I'm grateful that I can feel where I can feel. And when I do get a neck rub, you know what? I enjoy that way more than most people enjoy their neck rub because I am so grateful. I have gratitude for what I have. There's this picture of me doing the dishes. And when I was doing those dishes, I hated it. And I can't tell you what I would do to wash dishes again. Feel the earth beneath my feet. Feel the water go in between my fingers. Be able to feel temperature. Feel the hot dishes, feel the cold. And maybe some of you are like myself. You're more limited, guess what? Myself, I still can hear. I still can see. And there isn't many days that go by where I'm ungrateful for that. And when you have that mindset, when you're in this place of gratitude, you are going to put yourself in a different vibrational state. And in that, you're going to attract more things. I don't know if you've ever been in a really bad spot and then you just always constantly see these negative things happening. Well, that's because of the state that you're in. So when you decide to get into a different state, a state of gratitude, a beautiful state, you are going to then start attracting those things in your life as well. So just know that, yes, we have these different commitments, these different goals that we're gonna work on and those goals we now know how to start achieving. We've worked on that the last 50 minutes. But guess what? Even if I don't have that tomorrow, even if I don't have that next week, you know what I do have? I can enjoy the sunshine. I can feel the sun on my face. I can hear the cars go by, interrupting my video. And I appreciate that. Could not hear the cars go by. And I'm able to see, I'm able to still experience so much in life. I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate the, any kind of donation that you made towards Spinal Cord Research. That's what I'm doing this 10 year anniversary. And if you still haven't, you still have opportunity too. I think I'm gonna keep it open for a while and then after maybe a couple months, I am going to take whatever was donated and then use 100% of those funds towards a company that is working on spinal cord research for the celebration of my 10 year anniversary. So I appreciate any kind of support that you guys have given me and try some of these principles out for a while. Let me know how it improved your life or hopefully not disapproved, but um, how it changed things for you the better or the worse. And in closing, you have a beautiful rest of your day. Know that you have infinite potential. You just have to tap into it. You just have to get in that beautiful state. And when you do, great things are coming, my friend. I love you all. And I look forward to hearing your stories very soon. Blessings.